So some people have tried to argue that this is an epistemic problem, not an ontological one, that, um, say for example, the uncertainty principle is saying something about how much we can know about a particle, but just because we can't find out its um, position when we know its momentum exactly um, and vice versa, doesn't mean that it doesn't have a value for that. Um, and this would be called a hidden variables theory of quantum mechanics. And the rest of the videos in this series will, will be towards that point, namely showing that there can be no hidden variables interpretation of quantum mechanics. Okay, so from that last part, it seems unclear whether you're trying to say that there can be no hidden variables or that a hidden variables interpretation would be incorrect. Um, you said there can be no hidden variables interpretation of quantum mechanics and that seems to be the thrust of your whole uh, series here and I, I just wanted to point out that that statement can be interpreted multiple ways and I just would like you to clarify that if possible. Um, second I'd like to chime in on the nature of the Heisenberg uncertainty. Um, the fact that we use uh, electromagnetic energy to detect um, moving particles introduces a limitation in the form of wavelength and that wavelength is the reason that we are unable to uh, simultaneously know the momentum and the position of a particle because the the wavelength itself carries with it a time uh, and a frequency uh, which resolve to be the same to the same thing and so there's a there's a margin of error there that's related to the nature of electromagnetic energy and so um, I don't know if I'm not sure if you're trying to say that there can be no hidden uh, variables in order for the the theory to be complete or if you're saying that um, you have an alternative to the concept that there are hidden variables and so um, uh, per personally I'm coming from the many worlds camp um, which probably is uh, seems to be the one that is um, the hippy dippy trippy uh, one that you're not uh, uh, trying to that you're not trying to affiliate yourself with or that you're perhaps you're running from um, but in any case um, I wanted to find out from you uh, what what that what that situation was and then I'd also like to point out to you that the machine itself the device itself that makes these measurements that that takes these measurements in its sorting of the particles um, if you're familiar with the the the, uh, the general laws of electromagnetism um, you know that any moving electrical particle exerts a force on another electrical particle and any uh, change in a magnetic field uh, exerts a force on an electrical particle and so once those particles are out of alignment with one another the particle any particles that are moving in a stream in a in a in a stream that gets sorted off from each other would necessarily be uncoupled inductively in other words the spins are not separate from one another the spins of a, in a stream of particles are all connected are all inductively coupled through space time and so if you I mean by definition by the very definition unless you want to throw out what uh, Lenz and Faraday uh, demonstrated um, you would necessarily uh, affect the spin of the um, of the particles when you start sorting them out of a particular stream and um, someone else had uh, commented on your video it says your agenda is not scientific as you are starting from the assumption that there are no other forces supernatural or otherwise at work and therefore no God now I don't, I'm not going to throw the God in there but um, that is your real agenda not scientific principles uh, the guy the guy who invented the TV thought spirits could affect electrons how did these electrons come together one day how, 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 how did these electrons come together to one day ask such questions on how electrons work and who created them and I think that's that's a very very interesting thing that this uh, uh, Resmo 777 uh, is posting and I don't, I'm not sure if you understand what he's uh, alluding to 
but I think it's, it's very important that you uh, kind of wrap your head around the concept that these are entangled uh, particles. And the, you, you know, whether you want to uh, consider non-local entanglement or not, whether you want to try to argue against what the, 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 the salient fact that the EPR paper um, brought up, whether you want to, no matter which way you want to argue that, the, the local entanglement, the local electromagnetic inductive effects of the particles on one another is, uh, is the force that Resmo is referring to when he says, uh, you are starting from an assumption that there are no other forces. And so um, I think a lot of times uh, these kinds of experiments, even, even published experiments, even published experiments that are, have incredibly high budgets, uh, miss these kinds of very, very salient facts about the nature of reality.